Amen. This song's just been on, on my heart the past couple of days. It's <clears throat> with all the uncertainty, I'm glad that on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. So join with me and let's let's sing that this morning. Feel free to stand if you want. Feel free to sit, but let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you that we have a firm foundation in you, and we praise you for that, for a certainty in uncertain times. We praise your name, Lord Jesus.
I'm thankful for a God that's never failed me. Amen. You guys thankful this morning? Yeah. Praise the Lord.
we continue to choose him when there's a lot of other, other choices you could be making but when we choose him it's when all of our needs are met can you just take a second in your own words just just let that be your prayer say God I, I, I want you more than anything else in this world draw me near to you or if you're not there yet say God help me to grow in my relationship and bring me to a place where I'm not constantly needing something from you but I, I'm just in love with you I love just to sit at your feet. And I love just to learn from your scripture. I, learned to, I love to soak up your presence. Just take a second and, and pray and connect with the Lord. Father, we're here this morning gathered in your presence because we're choosing you. We want more of you. Draw every one of us near to you. I pray that you would open up our hearts and minds to hear from you this morning. Speak to us, encourage us. Do what you want to do. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can, uh, you can grab a seat. So I really want to encourage you this morning, um, but I also feel compelled just to warn us a little bit. Um, more than likely, we're going to see some greater restrictions coming our way. Um, and I, I, I just want to warn you now, I'm not talking about, can, can we uh, either bring, I, I'm sorry, I'm the one that turned down, can we either bring these house lights up, or that's right in my eyes, I can't see these people. I don't know if I want to see them, I don't know if they're smiling or not, <laughs> but yeah, it's a little better. Just, I, I don't like not being able to, that was my fault, that was on me, I did that. Um, I'm not talking about our church specifically, I'm talking about our nation as a whole. I'm talking about our economy, uh, your job, your current way of life. There are tough times ahead, and I'm afraid that most of us aren't ready. And I want to challenge you and warn you so that you can begin to prepare now and have a plan. Prepare financially. It might be time to tighten the belt. Don't go crazy on Christmas. Put some extra money aside in savings. And if I'm wrong, then when we have a clearer picture of the future, then you can kind of relax a little bit and have Christmas in July. Splurge then. You need to prepare now as a family. What habits need to change? Look back at the other shutdown. What worked for you? What didn't work for you? What do you need to begin to do different? Are there any habits you need to start or anything you need to stop? You need to prepare now physically. Develop a plan to stay active in winter and in the midst of another shutdown. Motion improves mood. Prepare now mentally and emotionally. Break. Some of you need to break your news habits and your social media habits. You need to decrease your negative intake and increase the positive intake. 
Prepare now spiritually. Are you connecting with Jesus on your own? And if not, then you need to start today. Whether we have a shutdown or not, this is a discipline that should be established in our lives as believers. We've got to have daily connection with Him, and it's even more vital in the midst of times like this. If our life is built on sand, which is anything else other than the truth of Jesus, then our foundation collapses when the storms come. But if our lives are built on the truth of Jesus, then we'll survive whatever comes our way. And I really believe a storm is coming, and, and I hope that I'm wrong, but this wave of COVID, of shutdowns, of restrictions is going to be far worse. If for no other reason, because it's happening in wintertime, where suicide is already higher, depression rates are already higher, stress is higher, people can't just go outside and soak in the sunshine. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough on you. Maybe you're in a good spot right now. Maybe you already know this is going to be tough promise you this this is just the warning part we're going to get encouraging but i need you to know this i'm i'm legitimately concerned for people's well-being if you don't have a plan it took a huge toll on people COVID has led to an increase in divorce rates suicide rates obesity levels and, and just what's what's the saying you burn me once shame on you burn me twice shame on me let's not get burnt this time around don't allow this next wave to overtake you take action develop a plan make sure that your foundation is built on the solid rock of jesus christ and that only happens when we when we obey his teachings listen to him and obey so that was my morning let me encourage you but here's what i'm afraid of is that some of you are going to ignore the warning and only hear the encouragement don't let that happen you can trust in god but that's not an excuse to be negligent even Jesus told us to count the cost. So be encouraged, but count the cost and be ready for the long haul. I'm not saying go out and buy all the toilet paper and ground beef you can find. Just know that tough times are ahead, and you need Jesus and his daily bread more than ever. But I really believe that if you connect with him every day, you can do more than survive this thing. You'll thrive. You can have joy in the middle of it all and be a source of joy for others. Let me pray over us. Father, I pray that you would uh, just speak to our hearts and encourage us, Lord God. Remind us of your faithfulness, that you see us, you know where we are. That if we connect with you, you're going to give us everything we need to thrive in whatever season comes our way, whatever storm comes our way. In your name we pray, amen. i got about 16 verses I'm going to read to you. 1 Kings 17, a little bit of a longer passage. Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe and Gilead, told King Ahab, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. This happened as a result of God's judgment on the nation of Israel. Ahab was the most wicked king that uh, ever ruled over Israel. And so, so God brought his judgment on the land. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him camp beside Kareth Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that or not. Everybody makes up, you know, however it sounds good in your mind. How would you say it? Zarephath? Anybody else? Can you say Zarephath? All right. Uh, so he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread, too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house, and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. That is a bleak picture. That's crazy. But Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said. But make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. That's an amazing story. The kingdom was wicked. God sent judgment, and that's where our story picks up. Do you know why the brook dried up? Do you think it was because the Lord's faithfulness had dried up or because his power ran out? I mean, in the same way that God caused the flour and the oil to never run out, couldn't he have done that same exact thing with the brook? 
Could it have dried up because the Lord needed to move Elijah from Kareth to Zarephath? Maybe God wanted to get Elijah from where he was to where God needed him to be. Could it be that the brook dried up because God wanted the blessings and faithfulness he poured into Elijah's life to overflow into someone else's as well? I really think that might be it. I think the brook dried up because there was a widow in need that God needed Elijah to take care of during this time. He used the poor to take care of the homeless and vice versa. In the middle of a nationwide famine, God brought two unlikely people together to see each other through. I want to ask you this morning, who does God want to cross your path with? Who does he want to bless and reach through the blessings and faithfulness he has poured into your life? Because we should understand that his blessings are meant to flow through us. So let me first remind you that he has blessed you. He has been faithful to you, and he's going to continue to do so as you remain faithful to him. What he did for Elijah, he can and will do for you as well. It probably won't be ravens, but you can trust that the Lord is going to get you what you need. He sees you, and he's going to take care of you, all of you. Romans 2.11 says that God does not show favoritism. James 5.17 tells us that Elijah was just as human as we are. So why did God take such miraculous care of Elijah, and how can you know that he'll do the same for you? James 5.16 gave us the answer, living righteously. Living righteously invites the blessing of God in your life. He loves you, and nothing is going to change that, but he wants to bless you more than you can imagine as well, and that is dependent on you. It's dependent on you living righteously, you remaining faithful to him. Jesus taught us the same truth in Matthew 6. Don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. People who have not experienced the faithfulness of God have to worry about having enough toilet paper. Worry, do I got enough food in the freezer? Worried, is there going to always be money in my bank account? He's saying, you don't have to worry about those things. You have encountered your Heavenly Father who sees you, who knows your needs before you even ask about Him, and He's going to take care of those so you don't have to worry about it. That's exactly what it says. Your Heavenly Father already knows what you need. So seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and He will give you every, everything you need. For some of you that want this to be easy and just to cut and dry to formulate, that's, that's it. Matthew six thirty three. Seek first the kingdom and live righteous. Everything else will work out. Maybe some things are going to change in your life. Maybe some things are going to shift. Maybe the brook that you're used to being refreshed by is going to dry up. But the Lord's faithfulness will never dry up. And maybe when things get shook up in your life, it will bring an awareness to you of the people around you that are struggling even more than you and need your help. In the same way that God changed things up for Elijah in order to lead him to a widow that needed his help, Maybe this is what the Lord is doing or is going to do in your life. He's going to direct you to somebody that needs what you have. They need the anointing you have. They need the hope of Jesus. They need to know that God's faithfulness is a well that never runs dry, that your cup runs over even in the valley of the shadow of death. Even when you're surrounded by difficult people and difficult situations, your cup overflows, and surely the goodness and mercy of your God will follow you all the days of your life. They need that. They need to see God's faithfulness in your life, and they need to know that in the same way that He loves you, the same way that He cares for you, the same way that He meets all your needs, He can and will do it for them. When they put their trust in Jesus, when they live righteously, every, every need they have will be met. Who does the Lord want to take care of during this time through you? He's going to take care of you. Who does He want you to take care of? Believers, it's, it's time to stop being selfish. If the Lord needs to dry up our brook, if He needs to shut off our usual source of refreshment so that His blessing will flow through us and not to us, then so be it. If that's what it takes, then I say yes and amen to it. I pray that God would do whatever He has to in our lives and in our church so that we can see a move of His hand, so that we can actually see His kingdom advance. And maybe some brooks need to dry up and some things need to be shaken up so that we'll stop being cared for and we'll start caring for others. And maybe... As that happens, we'll, we will more deeply learn and appreciate the truth that as you care for others and meet their needs, the Lord is going to continue to care for you and meet your needs. And you'll probably experience His presence and power in a way that you never have before, in a deeper, more intimate way, as we let His blessings flow through us. 
I want to pray for you, then I want to give you a moment uh, to pray. I, I really believe in another wave of, of shutdowns is coming, and it's going to look very similar to last time, if not a little bit more intense. And that was a moment for the church to be the church, and, and we missed it. Um, not just us, but most churches, and every, almost every Christian, we kind of hunkered down. i got to survive this thing. I don't know what's coming. We're called to thrive during that. If it happens again, may the Lord convict us and, and put people in our lives that we see the way he sees and recognize that we, our paths are crossed because God has blessed me so much that I can't even contain it. The Word says he's going to give me everything I need and some left over to what? To take care of others. May we have that kind of of heart and attitude. Can we close our eyes? I want to pray with you. Is there anyone here tonight who identifies with the widow? Things are, are bleak in your life, and unless God moves, you don't know how you're going to make it. I just want to pray over you and remind you that your Heavenly Father sees you. He knows your needs, and that as you live righteously, He's going to continue to meet them. I don't know how or when, but I know that He will. Just like the flour and the oil never ran out for the widow. His faithfulness will never run out for you. Anyone say, I, I, need, I need reminder to God's faithfulness tonight. I need to, to know that he, he sees me. He's going to care for me. Can I see your hand? I want to pray with you. Anyone else? Father, I pray for those that have raised their hand, Lord God. I pray that you would meet them right now with your presence. You would encourage them, Lord God. Lord, I pray that even today they would see your faithfulness at work in their life, Lord God. I just remind them that you are a good Heavenly Father who knows what we need and has a desire to provide what we need as we focus on you and continue to live righteously and put your kingdom first. In your name we pray. I've been praying for all of us as, as a church and as individuals that God would do for us what he did for Elijah, that he would show us today who he wants us to care for. Some things are maybe going to dry up in your life. Maybe they're changing a little even now, and you, you can see it happening. But could it be that the situation that you're in, God is using that to move you from where you are to where he wants you to be? Maybe some things are changing and some old things are drying up, but maybe God wants to do something new in your life that's uncomfortable, that's scary, that's uncertain. But he's in it. And so it should be exciting. And let it fill you with faith, Isaiah 43, 19 through 20. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and owls too for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. That is the, the God that we serve. That even in a barren place, he can pour out his blessings. Even in a dry and thirsty place, he can spring up water to refresh his chosen people. And you are a chosen people who have been called out of darkness into light. So I'm praying this over you tonight. That maybe some, some things are changing, but you would see that God is doing something new. And even though everything around you may look a little bit different, God's faithfulness is no different. He's still faithful, and he's going to continue to be with you. Let me give you a verse that I want you to pray through. 1 Chronicles 16, 9. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Elijah was not special. The Lord strengthened Elijah and took care of him because he was fully committed, because he was living righteous. Are you fully committed tonight? Are you living righteously? Is your foundation built on Jesus? Sin creates chaos creates distance and it cancels the blessings of God but I'm thankful that God wants to cancel sin and its consequences this happens when we accept Christ as Savior Colossians 2 powerful verses we're dead because of our sins because of our sinful nature was not yet cut away and God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all your sins he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it on the cross that's powerful so if you're a believer and you've got some things you need the Lord to cancel in your life, take some time right now and ask Him to do that. Ask the Holy Spirit to point out to you anything that might be off that's keeping you from experiencing. Look, you can experience the warm, fuzzy feelings of God's love all day long, but He's got more in store for you. Ask Him to point out with His conviction, God, is there anything in my life that's keeping me from experiencing the fullness of your presence?
I want every single blessing that you have for me. Not just for me, but for the benefit of those around me. If there's anything that's keeping me from experiencing the fullness of your faithfulness. If we could begin to pray with, with every eyes closed and we'll put on some music. Is there anyone here that would say, I, I need the forgiveness of Christ. I need to surrender my life to him. I didn't want to confess my sins and ask him to forgive him and, and make me new. Give me a new life through him. Can I see your hand? I want to pray with you. Father, as we pray as as a body, I pray that you would just speak to us. And if there's any areas that we're not fully committed, you'd reveal that to us. stay in this atmosphere of prayer to just shift your focus a little bit and ask ask the Lord to show you to put a person or a family somebody on your heart that he wants you to care for during this time who does he want his blessings to flow through you to get to them your eyes closed can I uh, just by show of hands I just want to see has God already put a person on your heart God is speaking to you now and you know somebody does anyone say like I, I'm praying right now and I just need God to show me who it is can I see your hand I just want to I want to pray with you thank you thank you God I, I pray for every one of us that you um, you would deepen our burden for those around us you would deepen our, our heart for the loss in our lives. God, that you would show every one of us, Lord God, just just a vivid image. Put that person's face in our mind right now, Lord God. And, and show us not just who we need to care for, but how we can begin to care for them. How can we minister? What, what needs to change in our lives so we can position ourselves to take care of others? God, fill every one of us with faith and full confidence, knowing that you're going to provide for us. You're going to give us everything we need and then some. Help us to see who it is we, we need to be able to care for during this time. Show us who you want to reach through us in the middle of this crazy season. See, in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. I want to encourage you to just to continue to pray. If, if you don't have somebody in mind today, keep praying. God will show you who it is that he wants you um, to care for. I really felt compelled to say something um, about 
about finances. This is not uh, for our church. I, I don't know if you guys remember this in the shutdown. I don't think, I don't think we took up. I don't know the last time we take up an offering. Um, we didn't take up one the whole shutdown, at least twelve or thirteen weeks. And God has been so faithful to our our church financially. You guys have been incredible. Um, I just want to take some pressure off of you financially. I know this can be a huge source of stress for people, but when you live righteously, you don't have to worry about anything, not even finances. You need to be smart. You need to budget, prepare, have a plan, but you don't have to worry. Hebrews 13, 5 says, don't love money. Don't be satisfied with what you have, for God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. That promise was, was linked directly to money right there. He's, he's going to take care of you. Here's what I want. If you, if you lose an income or that gets hit, obviously you can't tithe or, or things change up there. But if you have made a commitment to a missionary or to a ministry, don't, don't quit on that. Whether you're doing it personally or it's through our church or the pregnancy center here in town or the food pantry, but it, don't quit on that. If God put that on your heart, it wasn't just for a, a season where it was easy. Stay faithful to it now and God will provide for you. I, I promise you that. There may be some moments where it's tense, and if you really get in a bind, come and talk to me about it. But even this year, Karen and I personally have given away thousands of dollars. There's been a couple of decisions that made me nervous. But we have seen God's blessings continue to be poured out in our life, and and because it's not just for us, it goes through us. I really believe that. I'm not a, I'm not a prosperity gospel uh, kind of guy, but the Word teaches us that when we're faithful to give, we'll have... 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, you can read those chapters. God gives us everything we need and then some left over to take care of others. That's specifically what it says. Let me give you some um, faith builders and fear killers. Just three. I mentioned a few weeks ago, and I'm going to keep this in front of you, Matthew 5 through 7. Uh, and these are powerful chapters. I think all but like the very um, first verse and the uh, five and last verse of seven are all in red. They're the words of Jesus. I said a few weeks ago, and I just want to remind you this. Read this every Sunday night or Monday morning. Start your week off with that. It's the Sermon on the Mount. It's this beautiful, powerful, encouraging teachings of Jesus uh, that are just so more relevant now than ever. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 8. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. When we put our hope in anything other than Jesus, then really we have no hope for the future. Because all of those things will fail. Our, our hope can't even be in whatever your job is right now. Our hope is, can only be in Him. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. If you will let your roots grow down into Christ during this season, your foundation will be built on Him. You won't be bothered by a pandemic. You won't be bothered by any kind of economic crisis that comes our way. Your roots will be firmly established, and which means there will always be fruit in your life. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Now these three verses, uh, these three passages, Matthew 5 through, you can write them down. Matthew 5 through 7, Jeremiah 17, 5 through 8, Colossians 2, 6 through 7. Those are some verses you could meditate on, you could read through this week, and just let the Lord speak to you and encourage you that when our hope is in Him, everything's going to be, we're going to make this. So don't let fear settle into your heart during the season. I think we've just seen the tip of the iceberg as far as what some could come our way. I'm not scared or concerned in the slightest. Our hope is in Christ, the solid rock. We're going to be okay. And uh, you know what? If something does happen, to, to live as Christ, to die as gain. Let's not forget our hope isn't in this life, it's in the next life. Either way, we win. So let's stay encouraged and stay positive. Lord, I thank you for this, this time, this, for this group of people. I thank you for meeting with us here, Lord God. Encourage us with your presence. And God, may we seek your presence every single day, not just in these moments, Lord God, but turn to you for our daily bread, for our daily source of strength. Not expect somebody else to lead us, but God, we know you. We have a personal relationship with you. We can connect with you on our way to work tomorrow, on our way home, Lord God. 
Father, I pray that you would open our eyes to who we need to take care of. Even the employees that drive us crazy, our coworkers that get under our skin, break our hearts for them, Lord God. And I pray you'd give us, uh, show us who and how we can take care of them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Love you guys, and uh, have a great Thanksgiving. And we'll see you either next Saturday at 530 or uh, Sunday at 1015.